All right, so now we're going to go ahead and continue. Um, let me go ahead and restart this audio up where we left off. For so long, wickedness has just been allowed to run rampant. And so, majority of humanity sees no hope, okay? They're like, ain't nobody coming to save us. There ain't no power outside of the power of money. And you got to have money in order to, in order to make any changes. You got to have status. You got to have clout, okay? You got to have some kind of position of authority or know someone in authority upon the earth. Bruh. This is the ideology of the world. In order to enact any kind of change upon the earth, oh my God, in order to enact any kind of change upon the earth, you got to have some kind of position within authority on the earth. And that which gives authority upon the earth these days is money, okay? Respect and honor of men, okay? But this is not what's going to be utilized by the great spirit to bring about the righteous kingdom upon the earth. Now, let me show you that, okay? Because you're looking to the wrong people. You're, you're looking to the people who established this wicked-ass system. Why are you listening to wicked people? Thinking that you're going to be spared and saved from destruction. How? You're listening to wicked people. You're following wicked people. Therefore, you're going to reap the destruction of the wicked because you're following the wicked and you're being obedient to the wicked, okay? You're being evil toward the righteous, all right? So you need to understand this, all right? You And, and it's been draped in the robes of benevolence, okay? So you've been subtly deceived into worshiping and serving the adversary unknowingly, okay? Um, but the children of light is here to, um, help you. All right, one second. But this is not what's going to be utilized by the great spirit to bring about the righteous kingdom upon the earth. No, it's not. And let me show you that. Because he uses the, the meek, the lowly. He uses the outcast, okay? The one you least expect, okay? No, no. The seal portion, chapter 88. And now it shall come to pass in the latter days that the elect shall be upon the earth in every nation, among every people, and of every tongue. And every one of these shall be known and accounted for by the Messiah, the Good Shepherd. And now before these great natural disasters shall be allowed to occur by the command of Yahushua to prepare the earth for his coming, the gospel of the Messiah shall be given to the elect of the earth, and their stumbling block shall be taken away, so that they might see more clearly the true gospel of the Mahamashiach. And when the elect have received the fullness of the gospel, which is the seal of the Most High in their foreheads, then shall they begin to prepare themselves for the coming of Yahushua. That's happening right now. Okay? One second.
<coughs> one moment, I'm gonna go back one more time. Is money. Hold on, hold on. Okay? But this is not what's gonna be utilized by the great spirit to bring about the righteous kingdom upon the earth. You need to know that. Okay? Hold on. <clears throat> mm -hmm. He chooses to despise things, okay? Wisdom from the Most High. See, you want to follow the wisdom of this world and think that you're knowledgeable, okay? <laughs> you're, you're misguided. Brothers, consider the time of your calling. Not many of you were wise... By human standards, not many were powerful, not many were of noble birth, but the Most High chooses the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. The Most High chooses the weak things of the world to shame the strong. He chooses the lowly and the despised things of the world and the things that are not to notify the things that are. He's using the poor to put the rich to shame because the rich have the possession of the earth. But look around at the state of the earth. Look around at the state of humanity and all creation. Have they done righteously with the reins of the earth? They have been allowed to have possession of the earth. Look what they have done with it. They are not righteous. If they were righteous, then all creation would not be groaning. I gotta do it this way, bro. Stop messing with me. <sighs> One second, people. Mm, mm, mm. The stiff necked will be destroyed. Okay, that's why my people was destroyed. And all you people today that are puffed up in your pride and your arrogance, you're about to be destroyed. Okay? Hmm. Oh my gosh. A man who remains stiff-necked after much reproof will suddenly be shattered beyond recovery. Okay? You want to continue to ignore these messages? You want to continue to spit in the face of his servants? Go right ahead. You got free agency. But you're going to suddenly be shattered beyond recovery. When the righteous flourish and is in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked rule, the people groan. This is why all creation groans and suffers. Their wicked as economic system is slavery. Is is modern day slavery. Slaving for your bare necessities, you're lying in the pockets of billionaires. Okay? You've given them your power. Okay? Yes, you. we were born into this. But people accept the reality that they have been presented. 
And out of their free agency, they allow these wicked powers to rule over them and control their lives. If everybody stopped going to work, working their jobs, what the hell could those who are sitting back like fat cats do? What could they do? Not a damn thing. No, you wouldn't have your money. But if the people stood up and, you know, demanded their rights, demanded that their government do right by them. Okay, because if it's a, if it's a righteous government, the government will provide bare necessities for its citizens. Okay? Not freaking provide for their own damn needs and their own freaking happiness and well-being and screw everybody else. This is exactly what they've done. They don't work. Okay? These people who set themselves up in authority do not work. Okay? They got slaves for that. And that's the population. Okay? So, instead of being mad at me, why don't you people join me? Because we're all groaning and suffering. It's just that I choose to do it while trusting and depending on a higher power. While most people do it and live paycheck to paycheck or trust and depend on their money. Okay? And, you know, either way, you're, you're trusting and depending upon your money. But there are some that have more than others. Okay? So, you know, those that have abundance, and you, you're going to be judged... Way more harshly than those who are living paycheck to paycheck and don't and can barely make it them themselves. Okay? They're not gonna be judged for selfishness and greed. Okay? So clearly when the wicked rule the people groan. So these people who have been ruling, they are wicked. Okay? It's not a righteous system whatsoever. It's a wicked system. Everything contrary to the great spirit. All right? So, you're complacent with that. Now. He chooses the lowly and the despised things of the world, and the things that are not to nullify the things that are, so that no one may boast in his presence. I live to glorify my maker. Okay? It is because of him that we are in Christ. Okay? Christ's conscience. All right? Who has, <clears throat> who has come to give us the oracles of the Most High. Okay, establish our righteousness, our holiness, and how we are to be redeemed. Okay, he demonstrated it with his life. Okay, therefore, as it is written, let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. Okay, so yes, I glorify my maker. All right, I don't seek the glory in any of that for myself. Okay. I glorify my maker. I give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High. And I praise him in the land of my captivity. And I think upon his name. Okay? Though I'm groaning and suffering right along with the people, I'm here. Arisen. Okay? Something better is coming. We're not a part of these people. We're the opposite of these people. Now. The sons of light versus the children of darkness. You need this understanding. Okay? Spirit manifests in earthly form. They are spirit manifest in spirit form. For the commission of those goodly deeds which only the Father's wisdom decreeth. Okay? This, go, this connects to uh, the fruit of a tree. Okay? An apple tree is only going to produce apples. Okay? Right. 
Stop that. That is so annoying. Why y'all doing this? Come on now. <sighs> oh my gosh, this is so annoying. So annoying. I really wish this would freaking stop messing with me, bro. <clears throat> A tree and its fruit. And you're not supposed to be uh, judging outward appearance, but you are supposed to judge the fruit. All right? Beware of these false-ass prophets, okay? They come to you in sheep clothing. Is is covered in, in benevolence, okay? They wrap it in benevolence. Deception. They came to bring you deception, but it was wrapped in benevolence. Every single one of your religions, okay? It seems benevolent on surface level, but inwardly is a ravenous wolf. By their fruits you will recognize them. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. These people come from a bad tree. They get their honors of men, their doctorates, their clout, their status, their money. All of this came from wickedness. It came from the wicked. Okay? So the root of these people is a wicked tree. Therefore, you're not going to get good fruit coming from these charlatans, okay? He done told you that he don't dwell in buildings made with human hands. But yeah, you keep going to these buildings that was erected by these charlatans, listening to a man in a pulpit, being led astray by a ravenous wolf, okay? <clears throat> Every tree that does not bear good fruit is going to be cut down and thrown into the fire. So then by their fruit, you will recognize them. Okay? Oh, yes. All of this time, Satan was allowed to show forth to you many wonders. Okay? Give unto you your pleasures. All right? Distract you with the pleasures and the vain things of this world, while you ignore the spiritual. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Does this say, but only he that believes in a blood sacrifice? Or does it say, only he that does the will of my father. You have to be obedient. It ain't about no human sacrifice. It ain't about his blood. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive, drive out demons and perform miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Don't your Christian church teach you that ain't no law you got to keep? You can just live lawlessly and blindly believe in a blood sacrifice? And you call it faith? Therefore, anyone and everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them is like a wise man. A wise man. If you hear these words of mine and you act on them, you will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. 
the rain fell, the torrents raged, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall, because its foundation was on the rock. Yeah, I'm on a solid foundation. And it though, it, though it may seem on surface level that I fell because my internet was turned off, no. Nah. I was still very firm in my faith, okay? I ain't turned my back on this truth. No. I'm still standing upon the firm foundation. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them is like a foolish man. Who built his house on sand. The rain fell. See. When the rains come. And I lost my internet. The torrents raged. And the winds blew. And beat that beat down the house. See if I was not rooted. On the, on the firm foundation. Then I would have fell off. And I would have went to go do. What this world says that we got to do. In order to sustain our life. But I ain't a foolish man. So therefore, I ain't fall. I'm not falling just because I, I lost the internet. Nah. That was just a temporary win for Satan. In the evil kingdom. You got to gloat for, for a short season. But the most I knew the most I was going to lift me back up. I ain't going to stay down. Because I am on a solid foundation of truth, justice, love, freedom, happiness for all humanity and all creation. I am against evil. I am against deception. I'm against manipulation. Okay? Therefore, the pure of heart shall see God. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were astonished at his teaching because he taught as one who has authority and not as their scribes. And those of us who hear his voice, we are the same. Because it ain't us that's speaking, but the spirit of truth which is the eternal living word of the Most High that ain't never going to change. And that living word has authority over all the mere vain words of men upon the earth. Cause one just read that. Let me see. Back up here. Yeah, I just read that. Right. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> it was just worded different in the KJV. All right. Now, um, second. Search the heart. I try the kidneys and I give to every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his deeds. Okay. Now let's get into it. All right. Spirit manifests in earthly form. They are spirit manifest in spirit form. For the commission of those goodly deeds which only the Father's wisdom decreeth. Okay? They are endowed with, a, in, with infallible powers in matter. And that matter obeyeth them. Matter is their servant. They have dominion over it. They know neither time nor space. But transfer themselves from 
planet to planet or plane to plane or realm to realm in a twinkling of an eye. They come and go upon the Father's business. Great is their joy therein. They are pure in heart and beauteous of me. They seek to do the Father's will. And in that they seek, they do find life wondrous. They are not as we, for we are spirit come into matter to do the Father's will. We are celestial of origin, but mundane of mission. They are celestial of creation and go unto the furthermost star to be of service. Perceive you the difference? The sons of light have neither name nor identity, except that they be of good report. They live and have being in that they do good. Good is their watchword and password to existence. Wickedness canceleth their sentient lives. Look, they do destroy themselves automatically if they commit atrocities of temperament against the righteous of any creation. They are brilliant of aspect to the eyes without clay. Children of darkness discern them never. Children of light discern them easily when our vision is clear from mountaintops of wisdom of this world. Those of us who humble ourselves like little children to unlearn the wisdom of this world so that we can relearn via the spirit of truth. You can't pour new wine into old wine skins. You gotta let go of what it is you think you know. No one pours new wine into old wine skins. You wanna hold on to religion. You wanna hold on to your educational indoctrination. You wanna hold on to every single thing that you think you know since you've been born upon this earth and taught by other mortals. So how the hell do you expect to know the Most High? You were taught your God. You refuse to humble yourself to unlearn what you were taught by other mortals. So how can you learn of the true and living power? No one pours new wine in old wine skins. If he does, the wine will burst the skins, and both the wine and the wine skins will be ruined. Instead, new wine is poured into new wine skins. See, I was a babe. He showeth his word unto babes. He reveals his word unto babes. <clears throat> Those that ain't got a mindset full of dogmatic belief systems. And we are weary, all right? But our rest is coming. At that time, the Messiah declared, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise of the world, the wise and learned of the world, and revealed them unto little children, unto babes. You have hid these things from the wise and the prudent of this world, and has revealed them unto babes. Okay. Know ye that men are numbered with the fallen. Okay. If you're following the fallen, you're following wicked spirits, understand you're going to reap their destruction because you're being obedient to them. Okay? Let's 
second. Yeah, you choosing to serve wicked spirits, you know. Hold on. Do I have that up here? Bruh, I need this closed. Um, one second, people. You choosing to serve wicked spirits, I brought it out already. Okay. Mm. See, th this is the children of light. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Is that, that's not what I'm trying to bring out. I need this. This is what I need. <clears throat> yeah, this is what I need. Okay. <clears throat> the wages of sin. Okay? And you are still under a law. See, you know, they, they mix in... They mix in good and evil in these scriptures, people. Alright? <clears throat> There's an eternal law that cannot be done away with. Okay? Paul cannot do away with the eternal law that has been set in motion by the great spirit. Okay? That eternal universal law of karma. That eternal universal law of sowing and reaping. You will reap what you sow. What you do unto others is going to come back to you. Whatever vibrational energy you put out in the earth, in the world, that's what's coming back upon you. Okay? Can't nobody do away with that law. <clears throat> now. Hmm. Do you not know that when you offer yourselves as obedient servants, you are slaves to the one you obey? Whether you are slaves to sin leading to death or to obedience leading to righteousness? But thanks be to the Most High, that once, that though you were once slaves to sin, because we were all born into this satanic ass system, we were all taught according to the wisdom of this world. Okay? When we got of age to understand, you know, good apart from evil, the conscience that the Most High put within us, from that point on, this system has been trying to suppress that and tell us to ignore our conscience. But pay attention to what we're told and taught to believe. Okay? So understand, when we awaken spiritually, when we're given the ears to hear spiritually, and we humble ourselves before the, before the eyes of our maker... And we're obedient to our maker. Our maker has the ability to wipe our sins clean. Repentance is necessary. Atonement is necessary. Because the Messiah did not lay down his life to be a blood sacrifice to cover our sin. He demonstrated what needed to be done. To fulfill the eternal law of divine love. Okay? You need to understand this, people. It was great deception that was allowed to happen. But now the children of light has been commissioned to go forth with this true gospel. Alright? To give you a divine opportunity to humble yourself and change your heart. Alright? So thanks be to the Most High that you have an opportunity, okay? But you have to wholeheartedly obey the teaching, all right? Um, to to with what we're giving you, all right? I don't know why I just gotta read this way, bro. Hold on. 
So if you if you're if you take the name of the most high, you're committing yourself to the most high, then you will accept the reproof of the spirit of truth, which the children of light have been instructed to give to you. Okay? Then you will be set free from sin. And you will become a servant to righteousness. Okay? And I'm speaking in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. All right? Even the Messiah said this. And um, see, Paul really plagiarizes a lot of the Messiah. Okay? Hold on. Fleshly ears. Hmm. Disease, mortal body. Hold on. I think, is this it? Yeah. <clears throat> From the Essene Gospel of Peace. And now I speak to you in the living tongue of the living power through the Holy Spirit of our Heavenly Father. There is none yet among you that can understand all of this which I speak. He who espouses to you the scripture speaks to you in a dead tongue of dead men through his deceased, through his diseased and mortal body. Him therefore can all men understand, for all men are diseased and all are in death. No one sees the light of life. Blind man leads blind on the dark paths of sin. Diseases and suffering, and at the last, all fall into a pit of death. Now, the children of light has been risen, though we're still living on this earth amongst the wicked. Okay? I am sent to you by the Father that I may make the light of life to shine before you. The light lightens itself in the darkness, but the darkness knows only itself. And knows not the light. I have still many things to say to you. But you cannot bear them yet. For your eyes are used to the darkness. And the full light of the heavenly father will make you blind. Therefore you cannot yet understand. That which I speak to you concerning the heavenly father. Who sent me to you. Follow therefore first. Only the laws of your earthly mother. Of which I have told you. At least learn to love one another as you do yourself. Spill no innocent blood. Spill no blood, period. Treat your neighbor the way that you want to be treated. Do good unto all creation. Refrain from eating dead bodies of innocent animals, innocent creatures. Right now, so again, I'm speaking in human tongue in, in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. Just as you used to offer the parts of your body in slavery to impunity, in impurity, and to escalating wickedness. So now offer them in slavery to righteousness, leading to holiness. This is your atoning, okay? All your life, you've been sowing wickedness. Therefore, when you come into the knowledge and elevation in spirit and in truth, you will want to be sowing righteousness, okay? You sowed seeds of evilness all your damn life. So now you have to sow seeds of righteousness, you have to sow true love. You have to sow true compassion, true mercy. You have to sow the fruits of the Spirit. Okay? Therefore, you cannot be selfish. You cannot be greedy. You can't be a hoarder of abundance while his people are in need. Instead, you will want to be generous. With your abundance to the children of light. Okay? <clears throat> so 
Because as you were a slave to sin, you were free of obligation to righteousness. Because you have free agency. The most high ain't strong in arming you. Like the wicked strong arm us into serving it. Okay? The system strong arm everybody to bow down and participate in it. Evil forces everything. But the great spirit don't force righteousness. If you want to be righteous and you want to serve the true and living power, you got to choose to do so out of your free agency. And if you got no desire to do that, then you are not of the great spirit. You are of the adversary. Okay? The most I don't force righteousness allows you to do your wickedness, okay, for a period of time. There is going to come an end to it, okay? It is not going to last for eternity, especially what you do against the righteous, okay? There's a limit to it. What fruit did you reap at that time from the things of which you are now ashamed? The outcome of those things is death. But now you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to the Most High. The fruit you reap leads to holiness. That's only if you are sowing righteous fruit. Okay? You have to actively be sowing righteous fruit in order to be one of the righteous people of the Most High. Okay? Because it ain't about lip service. All right? You're either going to be a servant to sin or you're going to be, either you're going to be a servant to sin or you're going to be a servant to righteousness. You're either going to be a slave to sin or you're going to be a slave to righteousness. Okay? We have free agency to choose which one we serve. Okay? The fruit you reap leads to holiness, and the outcome is eternal life, okay, for the righteous. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of the Most High, which is the Holy Spirit, is eternal life, and the Hamashiach, the promised anointed one, okay? In order to have the Holy Spirit, which is a gift of the Most High, you have to humble yourself like a child. Repent for your transgressions. Receive the spirit of truth and the reproof that comes with it. Choose to be obedient and change. Your actions prove thy words. Okay? Now let's go back over here. I'm done with that. <clears throat> now, so, um, we went into more detail about this, all right? Know ye that men are numbered with the fallen, okay? Because we have free agency to choose who we serve, okay? You're either going to be obedient to the Most High, all right? Or you're going to be obedient to the God of this world, Okay? There's no in-between. Man of mortality has defiled his own species. He has made abomination that taketh him far from that which is spiritual. He has transgressed the laws of cleanness of heart. He has transgressed the laws of cleanness of heart. Okay? Hardly nobody cares about a cleanness of heart anymore. Nobody seems to give a damn about your heart being cl being clean, okay? Conscience being clear, all right? It's all about superficiality, outward show, vain imaginations of mortal men, not dealing with the matters of the heart condition. The Most High has always cared about our heart.
second. All right. <clears throat> the Most High looks at the heart. The righteous have hidden his word in a heart. His word is in my heart. I guard his word within my heart. I thank the Most High with my whole heart. I love the Most High with my whole heart. He knows every heart. He knows the ones of us that praise him with our whole heart. He has written his law deep within our heart. He created in me a new heart, a clean heart. Therefore, I am after his own heart. I have no qualms about the, mo the Most High searching my heart and my deepest core. All the crev crevices and revenues of my mind, my, my, my freaking uh, conscience, okay? I'm not afraid of the great spirit seeing everything that I think about. Everything that I do. I don't block all of that out. As if the most High can't see me. For those that say God knows my heart. You may want to stop saying that. As an excuse to sin. Because you damn right he does know your heart. Knows that your heart has deceived you. Okay? You refuse to subdue your ego. Therefore, your heart is desperately wicked. And you think that you're going to be spared. You think you're saved. But he's going to say, depart from me. For I never knew you. Ye workers of iniquity. Your heart and in your heart. You have no compassion, no kindness, no love, no empathy. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance. But the Most High looks at the heart. It is about our heart. So man has transgressed the laws of the cleanness of heart. Thus has he fallen. But man is not lost unless so be it he loses himself. Man climbeth, I tell you, from his earthly degradation. He goes up from beasthood and regaineth his lost status. How does he do that? By humbling himself. To the wisdom of, uh, to, to the, to the great spirit to unlearn the wisdom of this world. Accepting the reproof via the spirit of truth. Applying the living word to your life. Step by step, little bit by little bit. Elevation in the spirit and in truth. <clears throat> Man has progressed far on that way which is upward. He has glorified the form of the eight wherein he dwelleth. Behold, he has sung carols unto the Father with the throat that once grunted. He has seen eternal mysteries with eyes that once gazed upon practices unmentionable. I tell you, be advised. Ye are as gods yourselves among men. The sons of light are your ministering servants. The Father, I say unto you, pitieth man. Man has dealt harshly with himself. He has turned his high mind to matters that are childish. Vanity. Superficiality. He has made little birds of mud and expected them to fly. You think your economy is sustainable for eternity? 
is a false god. He has gazed upon starry heavens and exclaimed, Behold a canopy for our sweet entertainment. He has made no end of trivial ailment. He has watched for signs and for seasons and kept tryst with those omens which he himself created. Know that he is childish. He knoweth not his, his stature. Know that he must dwell yet many eons upon the earth to encompass his lost godhood. All right? So you will keep recycling back into mortality until you get it right, until you elevate in the spirit and in truth. It's about consciousness level, okay? When you're carnal-minded, you cannot perceive spiritual matters. But I say, as I have said before, that he shall make faster and faster progress from our presence among men. Man hath a devil within himself. Ever will he abominate. Okay? So, your lower carnal nature is the devil. Okay? Your ego is of the devil. Pride, arrogance, all of that is of the devil. Hatred, envy, bitterness, jealousy, all of that is of the devil. Selfishness, greed, lustful desires, all of that is of the devil. Is of the lower carnal nature. It is the opposite of the great spirit. Okay? But something better is coming. The whole creation waits with eager longing for what the Most High is bringing, bringing about. Every blade of grass and chirping bird waits for the Most High to set right where humans have put wrong. Alright? So now let's go ahead and get some more of this right quick. Oh, actually, hold on. I got one more thing um, to go over from the return of the children of light. Because you, you need to understand, you know, these things that were put wrong. All right? And also, I'm going to bring this back up. Because there was a reason for it. All right? So... Jeremiah 519, and when the people ask, why has the most high our power allowed all of this to happen to us, allowed our, our lands to be overran by the worst of the heathen, allowed these wicked people to get up on top of us, living all lavishly upon the earth. The earth has been given into the hands of the wicked. Why is that? Okay, why does it seem like the most high forsook the earth? Why, why does it seem like there's no higher power outside of the wickedness of this world? Why does it seem like evil is just allowed to just run rampant? All right? And, I, and you will tell them, as you have forsaken me and served foreign gods in your own land, so now you will serve foreigners in a land not your own. Now, this is no longer our land because it was overtaken. They stole our land. They stole all of our resources. Okay? Hold on. All right, perpetual slavery, enslavement of the aboriginal non-Christian people, not only in Africa, but also what they considered the new world, okay? They set themselves in the authority. They gave themselves the authority to invade, search out, capture, vanquish, and subdue all pagans, all right? Whatsoever and other enemies of the Antichrist, okay? To reduce us to perpetual slavery. All right? <coughs> so now, they do possess these islands, lands, harbors, and seas. Okay? According to their authority. Okay? So they took our lands and all of our resources by force. 
biblical prophecy fulfilled against us. Okay? So now foreigners are in rule on our land. Okay? Let me show you something. One second. One second. I don't need to rename this thing, bro. All right, here we go. All right. So you can clearly see this. All right. Let's hold up a little bit. All right. They, they, they know. They know. This is what the queen wore. Her pendant. Okay. The so-called queen. Okay. Look. They, they know. They know what they did. Okay. They know that they came and destroyed us. Okay. And see how they, they made statues of it. Okay. Our bodies laying like the ground for them that went over, okay? The cup of wrath. See, all of this time we have been drinking the cup of wrath, okay? Thus says the Most High, even the Most High who defends his people. See, I have removed from your hand the cup of, of trembling or staggering from that goblet, the cup of my fury. You will never drink it again, for it's going to be placed in the hands of your tormentors who told you, lay down so we can walk over you, so that you made your back like the ground, like a street to be traversed. I will put it into the hand of them that afflict thee, which have said to thy soul, Bow down, that we may go over. And thou hast laid thy body as the ground and as the street to them that went over. Okay? Our body has been laid as the street for them. That went over. Okay. That's us. And it was allowed for a period of time. Okay. Now let's read. From the return of the children of light. Let's just start here. During the conquest. The Spanish directed by the Catholic Church systematically destroyed nearly all vestiges of Incan spiritual life. Every lineage, waka, every, whatever that word is, stone, all the ceremonial sites, and the, whatever that word is, quipus. Moreover, <clears throat> the conquistadors invaded sanctuaries of the virgins of the sun, whom they raped. The agriculture, is that, yeah, agricultural terraces and irrigation systems were seized, but were not maintained. See, you know, they want to, they want to portray themselves as they were the bringers of civilization. When really they came to destroy great civilization. Okay, you see this. The agricultural terraces and irrigation systems were seized, but were not maintained. As a result, the people were no longer connected to the stars from which they originated. 
The solstices and equinoxes, so vital to the people's vision, could no longer be accurately observed. The people's ties with history were severed, and there were no longer any surpluses of food or water, but instead droughts and famines. The conquistadors, driven by overwhelming greed and a blind arrogance based on an indoctrinated sense of moral superiority had but two interests, subjugation and gold, okay? They were seeking the riches of the world, okay? The story in Mesoamerica is much the same as that in Peru. All of this is the fourth part of the earth over here in what they call the new world, okay? Although in both regions, even long after their golden ages, golden ages, okay? We were the pinnacle of civilization. See, you, you have no idea what you have attached yourself to. We were a great and prominent people before we were destroyed. Okay? And civilizations overran by the Spanish were in many ways far more advanced and progressive than the cities of Spain at that time. Since the Vatican had decreed that the indigenous people of the Americans were not human and thus had no souls, anything was tolerated in the blind pursuit of the one and only God. Gold. From Cuzco alone, the Spanish took billions of dollars worth of gold. Often in the form of extraordinary pieces of artwork melted into ingots. Much of the wealth that came from the conquest ended up in the coffers of the Catholic Church, which in turn continued to support the conquistadors. So they built their whole system on raping, robbing, and murdering. This was not done in righteousness. And it was done because of our wickedness. It, it was allowed by the great spirit. All right? The so most High told us we forsook him. We served foreign gods in our own land. All right? We were, so, we were serving gods of bloodshed. We refused to listen to any of the prophets. So when you read the Bible, it's about us. Is about the Israelites. Is the history and the story of the people of the book. Okay? So we were reaping our judgment this whole time. So we've been living in a paradigm. All right? So much of the wealth that came from the conquest ended up in the coffers of the Catholic Church, which in turn continued to support the conquistadors. Ultimately, the goal of the conquistadors was to break the spirit of the people. They were enslaved and brutalized, stripped of everything that had meaning. And their religious practices or their spiritual practices were outlawed. However, despite this violence, the seed did not die. But instead, some went underground within the unconscious, where in the realm of our deepest yearnings, it awaited the return of the light. So a lot of us were put to sleep. Some of us fled into the earth, okay? Um, others fled into other parts of the earth, all right? Um, so understand that all of this is going to be overturned. We're going to be reunited with all of our brethren, okay? Now, in this society, money talks, 
Okay, they tell you in the movies. They program you with this. Okay? Money talks and bullshit walks. Money talks. Should I listen? Look at the illustrations that they have of this. Okay? Money talks. All right? If you got money, you must be somebody, right? But you don't want to consider who the hell established the economic system. Who the hell created money? Look at all of this. Money talks and bullshit walks. So money is power, right? According to this world. You get money, then you're a mover and shaker in this world, right? You're able to control people. If you get money, Oh, you can buy people to do your bidding. There's somebody who will sell out for the right price. Money, power, respect in this false ass reality. You respect these people who are living lavishly. You're blinded by the God of this reality. This false reality. What you gonna do when your money go up in smoke? What you gonna do when there's no longer a value system that the great spirit allows to be established upon the earth? Withholding bare necessities from the righteous. What you gonna do then? Ideology of the wicked. Money is power, freedom, a cushion, the root of all evil, the sum of blessings. That's crazy. Blessings of Lucifer? And yes, the sum, the, the root of all evil. Blessings of Lucifer. Money is power. The power of money. So if you got money, you can buy clout and status. With enough money, you can buy whatever the hell your heart desires. Because this is the God that's been established in this false ass reality. While you ignore those that are in poverty, but have been blessed by way of the Spirit to give to you spiritually, freely. I'm giving you that spiritual food. But it's heavily slept on and rejected for fool's gold. You want to hold on to your false ass reality. Knowledge is power and time is money. Respect power and money. They glorify these things. Scarface, money, power, respect. I have this game. PlayStation. I don't know where my PlayStation is at. My my PS2. Um, but I used to play these games. I have this game. Scarface, money, power, respect. I have games like um, uh, San Andreas. You know. Um, yeah. I used to play these games. Okay. It's all about money, power, and respect. 
okay? It shaped our mind, all right? But I've never really been about it. I like playing the games, you know, but, you know, I've I never been the type to really want to do that in, in, in reality, in this reality, okay? I didn't have a heart after that, okay? But you see this, all right? Work hard, dream big. This was glorified in this world. And if you don't do this, then you are considered lazy, okay? You're considered lazy. If you are not, if, if you're not doing what you can to get that money, then you are considered lazy. You are considered a leech within this false ass reality. Money ain't where it's at. There's a higher power outside of this false ass reality. Okay? Now. Creation is waiting for something better. Yeah, there's something better coming. Let's go ahead and see where we're at in this audio, bro. Because, man, hold on. Okay? Respect and honor of men. Okay? But this is not what's going to be utilized by the great spirit to bring about the righteous kingdom upon the earth. No, it's going to come from the meek. And the lowly, okay? It ain't gonna come from those in prominent positions. All right? So is the meek, is the lowly, is the ostracized, is the castaway, is the misfit, is the conspiracy theorist, is the throwaway, is the nobody, is the trash, is the refuse of the nations. That's who the great spirit is using these days to get out this truth and to give people, all of humanity, a genuine opportunity to humble yourselves, repent, and change your heart. Okay? You have to humble yourself in order to be reproved via the spirit of truth. That's the only way that you're going to be able to accept the reproof. You have to accept the reproof in order to make any kind of changes in your life. How would you know that you need to make changes in your life if you keep rejecting the reproof? And yes, you most definitely have to make changes in your physical life. How would you know that you need to make changes in your life if you keep rejecting the reproof? I'm going to need you to think about that. How will you ever know that you need to make changes when you refuse to listen to the spirit of truth and the reproof thereof that comes with the spirit of truth? It will be impossible. I'm close some of this out. done with this. Right, one second. <clears throat> now. Let me play it one more time. And yes, you you know that you need to make changes in your life if you keep rejecting the reproof you should ask yourself that okay Now, 
The Most High does not change the condition of a people unless the people change themselves. Okay? Now, I showed you in the first video um, what was required of the indigenous seed of this land. Okay? How a third of us, a remnant, came back to the original covenant. One second. Here's another connection to that, okay? Israel shall become conscious conscious and awake from their slumber, but only a remnant shall return unto him, okay? There is a remnant of the children of light that have chosen to be obedient to the leading of the Holy Spirit, okay? We're the ones that are following the good shepherd and being obedient to work in a vineyard. To give others a divine opportunity to do what we did. Okay? I'm not speaking anything that I haven't already done and applied to my life. Okay? Now. Um. We're part of the remnant that is going to be delivered, okay, from our enemies, all right? Romans 9, 26, and it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them that you are not my people, there you shall be called the children of the living power, all right? And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory, even us whom he has called. Not of the indigenous people only, but also of the Gentiles and the nations, okay? That cleave to the children of light, all right? As he also saith in O.C., I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not my beloved. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, you are not my people, there we shall be called the children of the living power. Isaiah also crieth concerning Israel, though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, only a remnant shall be delivered. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the most I make upon the earth. And as Isaiah said before, except the Lord of Sabaoth had left, a, had left us a seed, the remnant, or, or right, us, the seed of this land, except he had left us a seed, okay, we have been like Sodom and been made like unto Gomorrah with no hope, okay, but we're here to give you the life raft. For we have applied the living word to our life. Now you can choose to continue to cast us up all you want. You have free agency. Okay? Nevertheless, this prophecy is unfolding. All right? Whether you believe it or not. All right? People that you never thought of could be the most high elect. You despise his people. And that's a shame. Okay? Joel chapter 2, 32, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Most High shall be delivered. Now calling upon the name of the Most High means to be obedient. Okay? It means to be righteous. It means to be one of his. It means to be accounted one of his. Okay? For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, that be us, the seed of the land. For in us, shall be deliverance 
as the Most High has said, and in the remnant whom the Most High shall call. You nations are to cleave unto us, the children of light. You shall know us by our fruit. For the Most High will have mercy upon Jacob and yet choose Israel. Restoration for Israel. It is coming. True Israel. All right? See, we've been living a false reality. For the Lord will have compassion on Jacob. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Once again, he will choose Israel and settle us in our own land. And the foreigners, the righteous ones, will join themselves to us. Unite themselves with us. Cleave unto us. The nations will escort Israel and bring it to his homeland. That means they will become the righteous ams. Then the house of Israel will possess the nations as men servants and maid servants in the, in the Lord's land. Now you're not going to be technically captives, but bruh, it goes hella deep and I'm not really trying to go that deep right now, okay? It's, this is going to be done in righteousness. Okay, you're not going to be no slave. Okay, you will be the laborers. All right, you will be the workers of the vineyard and all of that. All of this time, we were made to serve in our own damn land that was taken from us and overran by the worst of the heathen. Okay. So you're going to have to come to that realization because we're going to become lords of our land again. We're not going to be ruled by the foreigners. We're going to be put back in charge of our own land. And all the foreigners that are dwelling with us in righteousness, you're going to want to do your duty. Okay? You're going to recognize who we are. All right? And it's going to be done in righteousness. Okay? So understand that we're not here to set ourselves up in authority over you. It's just the fact that this was our an this is our ancestral land. Okay? And we're going to be made lords of our land again. And all you nations that are cleaving to us, you will be up under our subjection. But we will be righteous. We are righteous. Therefore, you're going to rejoice. Okay? You're not going to be in bondage. All right? The only ones that's going to be in bondage is those who refuse to cleave unto the children of light. Okay? Now... We have to change ourselves first. All right. We had to change ourselves first. Judgment begins at the at the house of the Most High. Okay? Judgment begin with us. All right? And if it first began with us, uh what you think is going to come for the ones that was was uh, allowed to Bring that judgment against us. Okay? For the time has come that judgment first began with us. Okay? And if it first began with us, what shall the end be of them that choose to obey not the gospel of the Most High? All right, this is the true gospel that's going forth. 
All right. If the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? All right. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of the Most High commit the keeping of our souls to him in well-doing. As unto a faithful creator, we will be delivered. Okay? Now, see where we're at in this audio, bro. And yes, you most definitely have to make changes in your physical life, in your physicality. In order to be delivered by the great spirit. In order to be of the great spirit, you have to have the qualities of the great spirit. You cannot be contrary to the great spirit. For if you are contrary to the great spirit, you're contrary to love. You're contrary to mercy. You're contrary to compassion. You're contrary to forgiveness. You're contrary to all of these good things of the great spirit. Therefore, you are not of the portion of the great spirit. Therefore, you are not going to receive the protection of the great spirit. No, you're going to receive the chastening of wicked spirits. Okay? For that is what you have sown towards. All the negative energy of hatefulness, bitterness, jealousy, envy, greed, strife, manipulation, deceit, suffering... All of these things that you inflicted upon others, you fed the dark realm. Therefore, the dark realm is going to lay its hands on its prey. You served the dark kingdom. So now the dark kingdom is going to have possession over their subjects. You are their portion. You got no love in your heart for your neighbor, but you love your money and all of your materialistic possessions. Understand that you got the mark of the beast in your forehead. It doesn't matter your ideology. It don't matter what you think you believe. You would incite yourself out to believe many deceptions. And it's all because of your pride and your ego, your arrogance. This is the same sin of Lucifer who fell from the righteous kingdom. You refuse to put your ego in check. You rather look your nose down at me and call me a charlatan, even though my actions lie. Hold on, before we get into that. So, this was Lucifer. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Okay? <clears throat> so, pride cometh before a great fall. All right? Everything you are now will decompose after you die. So why so much pride, so much greed, so much evil, so much ego? For what? That which is corruptible shall pass away. But that which is eternal will last forever. All right? Pride comes before the fall. All right? When pride comes, then comes disgrace. But with the humble is wisdom. All right? So all of you who want to continue blindly following the wisdom of this world, hey, you got free agency. 
Okay? You get free agency. You cannot serve two masters. I know your works, that you are neither hot nor cold. It is better to be either cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, you refuse to actually pick a side. Therefore, by default, you're, you are choosing the side of evil. Okay? You choose to not humble yourself and unlearn the wisdom of this world. You choose to not have the ears to hear the spirit of truth and accept the reproof. Then by default, you are of the adversary. Okay? His sheep hear his voice and they follow. The sheep of the Messiah, the good shepherd, hear his voice and follow. Okay? All the rest will follow their lower carnal nature. And they are of the adversary. It's time to pick a side. Because your time is up. The time for evil ruling is coming to an abrupt end. Okay? It's time for the deliverance of the children of light. And all those who are dwelling, who are, who are cleaving to us. Okay? No servant can serve two masters. For either he will love one and hate the other. Or despise the one and hold to the other. Okay? All right? You cannot serve both the most high and money. Okay? It's an impossibility. All right? You cannot serve both the most high and money. So why are so many people glorifying money? As if money makes the world go round. Because that's this false-ass reality that was brought by the wicked. Okay? And unfortunately, yes, it was the Europeans that brought about this great wickedness. So Europeans, you are not the pinnacle of great civilization. You were used by Satan to destroy civilization. Okay? Therefore, you have to humble yourself and repent. Okay? Now, I'm not saying as a whole all Europeans uh, are wicked. No. Not all of you are. Some of you will have the ears to hear. But you still have to repent for the sins of your forefathers. You never know what the hell your forefathers did. Okay? We are instructed not to worry about our life. What we shall eat or drink. Or about our body. What we shall wear. Life is much more than food. And the body more than clothes. Okay? We've been living in the times of the Gentiles. So it is the Gentiles that desire the riches of the world. Therefore, do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles strive after these things. Okay? The Gentiles strive after these things. But our Heavenly Father knows that we have need of these things. So we are instructed to seek first the kingdom of the Most High and His righteousness and allow Him to supply all of these things unto us. Therefore, we do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Today has enough trouble of its own because of the wicked. Okay? So Gentiles, Europeans... We are not to follow your ways. You are to renounce your ways and follow the children of light who follow the good shepherd, who follow the great spirit, and who bear the fruits of the great spirit, of divine love, compassion, mercy, empathy, all of these good things. You are to exemplify that, not the love of money and materialistic things. Okay? Now, let me check my time. 134. We're almost done with this. We got like two more minutes of the audio, so I'm just going to let it play on out. Um... 
You'd rather look your nose down at me and call me a charlatan, even though my actions line up to the eternal laws of love, life, and all things good. My fruit, my attributes, how I live my life lines up to the characteristics of the one who I serve. So say what you want to say about me, people. Keep hardening your heart towards me. Using your own ideology and the wisdom of this world. Continue making yourself an adversary to the one you're professing you're serving. See, and you know, hold on a second. So say what you want to say about me, people. Keep hardening your heart towards me. See, and, and the longer you continue to harden your heart against the light, okay, the ones of us following the good shepherd, the worse off you're going to be, okay? Because we've been showing you all of these receipts of who we are, what has happened. You want to continue to ignore this as if it doesn't matter, all right? We've been living in a paradigm. Okay, because this system was established in great wickedness. But the Messiah came as a light into the world. He says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Okay, this is what you want to cleave to. This is what you want to obey. This is what you want to be obedient to. This is what you want to pattern your life after. Not after the wisdom of this world. Okay? I am a doer of the word. Not a hearer only, deceiving my own self. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass or in a mirror. For he sees himself. And go is his way and forget what he looked like. Forget what manner of man he, he was. Forget the oracles of the great spirit. See, I don't forget who I am and my mission. What I'm instructed to do upon this earth. How I'm instructed to live my life upon this earth. I demonstrate what I have been given to speak. I live what I speak. Being a light worker is a full-time job. Since the world is always watching us, we light workers must also watch what we do so that no true accusation may be made against us as ambassadors of the true light. So yeah, I ain't got no fear of the charlatans. Saying whatever they will about me. I ain't got no fear of the hatred. Of the envious. And the jealous. They made themselves an adversary. To those of the great spirit. Therefore they have made themselves adversaries. To the one they profess they serve. Now. Uh, let's go over here. To Chrome right quick. Because we're going to read something from Iris Wisdom. Okay, one second. This is a book. It's an old book, Irish Wisdom. Okay, so one second. This is going to be about the attributes of the Most High. Okay? Uh, let's see here. Let's start at the top. And to the sun god by the Aryan or Aryan or Aryan or... Irish priests of Issa, their theology was based on the idea that the supreme deity never had nor has a name. He is known only by attributes as the quote good or God, holy, most high, etc. And as the solar sun is the center of light, 
and his great representative or quote son in our system, the sun god is named after the qualities and attributes of some idea such as quote the horseman or the charioteer, the strong one, the strong one, or Samson, or the fierce one, Horus, the heavenly wolf who is eager, swift, and fierce. Okay, all of these different attributes that's been assigned to the great spirit, all right? Now, that's because of the eternal law that was also set in motion, all right? The fierceness of the wrath of whatever um, you're reaping is according to what you have sown, okay? So if you're sowing negative energy, um, the amount of negative energy that you have sown, that's the amount that's going to come back upon you, okay? Now, hold on. I'm, that's all I'm going to read on that, okay? One second. Uh, let's see. Some more viewed. Okay, so let's see here. We got to understand the righteous view the Most High as loving kindness, but the wicked view the Most High. What the hell? What did I do, bruh? <laughs> oh, crap. Hold on a second, people. I accidentally almost opened up Photoshop. Give me just a second. I'm gonna close out of this thing. All right, there we go. Now, <clears throat> I think this is from the Essene Book of Haggai. Okay, the righteous view the Most High as loving kindness. Okay. The righteous view the Most High as loving kindness. Let's see if we can make this just a tad bit bigger. All right. All right. And the word Mota comes from the word Yatsa, which means to be begotten. And because of this, all of the righteous among the ancients viewed that each person who loves the Most High must beget the Lamb of the Most High in their hearts. And while the 24 communities spoken of by the brother of Jared would beget some aspect of him in this world, the ancients knew each and every man must beget him in his own heart and soul. So having a relationship with a great spirit. And in addition to this, the ancients viewed that there was no sin in all the earth except with men. For the earth abides the holiness that came in the day of the creation of it. And all the Erekodeshi stand firmly in their unwavering determination not to depart away from any of the desires of the Most High. And they saw that the need for the Most High to have a son so that they could be forgiven came with them through the gate of Eden and it went forth with sinful men for many among them would love him as they multiplied and spread out upon the earth. And in their thinking, they viewed it as the Lamb of God who flowed outward with them from Eden to remain by their sides, to bless and forgive and sustain them. And thus it was viewed from Yasakad until Enoch, even until Enoch, who first came to know concerning the evil of the Derekadashi, the wicked realms, okay, from the wicked realm, all right, and Enoch was followed by Melchizedek, who established Shabuah. And he knew that the Ero Kodeshi did not need the forgiveness of most of the Lamb, but only sinful men must be near him, and the Ero Kodeshi could not be forgiven. 
So it came to pass that all of the righteous among the ancient viewed the Most High as mild and gentle and forgiving and filled with loving kindness. But among the wicked, he was viewed as angry and powerful and vengeful and one who is to be much feared. Okay? The reason why the wicked view the Most High that way is because of the eternal law of reaping what they have sown. The wicked know that they sowing evil. Therefore, they know in the crevice of their mind, deep down in their soul, they know damn well that they're going to reap. Eventually, they're going to reap all that evil that they have been sowing. But because they want to have temporary happiness, they do what they can in order to get the temporary happiness, caring not about what's coming for them, caring not that they're stirring up wrath for themselves, okay? Because eventually they will reap all of that evil that they have sown, all right? Now, um, that's the wages of sin, okay? Mm. Know you not that whom you yield yourself servants to obey his servants you are to whom you obey okay you cannot serve two masters you cannot serve the great spirit of love life and all things good and money okay you are servants to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Okay? You have to change yourself, people. All right? I've done this, and I'm here to multiply spiritually. Okay? The Most High does not change the condition of a people unless the people change themselves. Okay, so we had to change ourselves first in order to be utilized by the Great Spirit to be here to help you. Okay? Truth be told, people that you never thought of could be the Most High's elect. So careful spitting on us. Careful mistreating us. Careful in what you say about us. Okay? Because we're the ones that's here to bring in a better reality. The whole creation is waiting with eager longing for what the Most High is bringing about. Every blade of grass and chirping bird waits for the Most High to set right what has been set wrong. What the Most High allowed. Okay? Allowed it for good reason. Alright? It was through the purging of the fire that the elect was able to be brought out. Okay? We were refined. Okay? Now... One second, see where I'm at. So say what you want to say about me, people. Keep hardening your heart towards me. Using your own ideology and the wisdom of this world. Continue making yourself an adversary to the one you're professing you're serving. Because you're about to be shown that the one that you've been professing ain't the one that you've truly been serving. No, you've been serving the adversary. Yes, you've been serving the adversary. And I've been telling you this left and right, okay? I keep telling you 
And the scriptures, the scriptures tell you that Satan masquerades as an angel of light. Okay? Demons masquerade as the voice of the Most High. All right, but they are Satan's ventriloquists using ignorant humans to as their dummies, okay? Bro, I don't want NIV. No, see, and this this right here, Paul and the false apostles, Paul was the false apostle. They work sorcery in your scriptures. Okay, so Paul was speaking this against the hand-chosen disciples of the Messiah. You know, the audacity. But it was Paul that was a, a freaking wolf in sheep clothing. Okay? But, yeah, no wonder Satan masquerades himself as an angel of light. Okay, it's not surprising then if his servants masquerade as servants of righteousness. Their end will correspond to their actions. This is why you shall know them by their fruit. Okay? Hold on. All right. You shall know them by their fruit. Okay? Not what they say. All right, understand everything that's that's been presented in this false ass reality has been presented in the robes of benevolence, but in these days, good is being called evil, and evil is being called good, okay, and the scripture says, "Woe unto those that call evil and evil good, and put sweet for bitter and bitter for sweet. We've been living this people, okay. You've been worshiping a false god. The scriptures say that Satan deceiveth the whole world, you, but somehow you think you ha you cannot be deceived. All right? Scripture says that the whole world is deceived. Revelation 12, 9. Why in the hell do you think that you are exempt? Stop deceiving yourselves. If you think that you are wise by this world's standards, you need to become a fool in order to truly be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with a great spirit. And all those who follow the great spirit, okay, all those who serve the great spirit, okay, we're contrary to this world. We're not of this world. Therefore, the world despises us. So you want to set yourself as an adversary against the elect of the great spirit? You have your free agency to continue to do that. But we're here telling you that these people here went out to deceive the masses. Okay? They follow their master, Lucifer. All right? Now, if the truth offends you, it's most likely because you are deceived. Okay? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But, you know, that's just what it is. Okay? Let's finish this up. Your hatred don't come from the one you're professing you serve. Your jealousy don't come from that power. Your envy don't come from that power. Your selfishness and your greed don't come from that power. So what's the point? Why you got his name in your mouth when your actions is contrary? The children of light has been risen within the lands of our captivity, brought back to remembrance of who we are. Yes. Now look. Thou shalt not take the name of the Most High thy power in vain, for the Most High will not hold you guiltless when you take his name in vain. Now look it for lip service. 
okay? You take his name saying that you worship and serve the Most High, but yet you don't do what he says. That's taking his name in vain, okay? These people draw nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, but in vain. They do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Okay? If they were teaching you correctly, they would have turned you from your iniquity. This is Jeremiah 23:16. Lying prophets. Hold on. <clears throat> Give me just a second, people. I gotta find what I'm looking for. I flow by way of the spirit. I ain't got no notes, so I just gotta find it. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, here we go. All right, so it's Jeremiah twenty three twenty two. What's I I'm in the right. Okay, so it, it, this is just a little bit more. All right, lion prophets. Okay. See, the most I said, I did not send these prophets. Yet they have run with their message. I did not speak to them. Yet they have prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, they would have proclaimed my words to the people and turned them back from their evil ways and deeds. Okay? But your false prophets ain't done that. Okay? Your false prophets have lied to you. All right? For both prophet and priest are ungodly. Even in my house I have found their wickedness, declares the Most High. Therefore their path will become slick. They will be driven away into the darkness and fall into it. For I will allow disaster upon them in the year of their punishment. Their time is coming. All right? And as it happened to us when we were on top, all of our prophets that were on top, we were brought low, okay? The great spirit removed protection from us and allowed the worst of the heathen to come destroy us. All right? So now the same thing going to happen to those that set themselves up in authority. Okay? All them charlatans is in for a very great destruction. Okay? And all of you who continue to cleave unto them, you continue to listen to these prophets who are prophesying lies unto you. Filling you with false hopes of a rapture. They speak visions from their own minds. Not from the mouth of the Most High. They keep saying to those who despise me. The Lord says that you will have peace. And to everyone who walks in the stubbornness of his own heart, no harm will come to you. Understand you going to reap what you have been sowing. You refuse to humble yourself like a child and repent for the sins of your forefathers and for your own wickedness and choose out of your free agency to live a righteous life and sow the fruits of the spirit. Then you are going to reap destruction. Okay. Which of them has stood in the counsel of the Most High to see and hear his word? 
Who has given heed to his word and obeyed it? Behold, the storm of the Most High has gone out with fury, a whirlwind swelling down upon the heads of the wicked. The anger of the Most High will not turn back. Now, this anger of the Most High is the freaking eternal law that's going to be poured out upon the wicked and the ungodly. You're going to reap what measure you have dealt out. Again, he said, I did not send these false ass prophets. Yet they have ran with their message. He didn't speak to them. They didn't unlearn the wisdom of this world and been taught by the spirit of truth. They have not applied the living word to their life. They are not living the truth of the most high. So therefore they were not chosen by the Most High to speak the living word. Because they ain't got the living word. So he did not speak to them. Yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, then they would have proclaimed my words to the people and turned them back from their evil ways and deeds. Daniel 12, 3, and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Okay? We're in this time right now. All right? The books are unsealed now. We're in the end. Okay? At that time, Michael shall stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as has never since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, thy people, thy people, at that time, thy people shall be delivered. Every one that shall be found written in the book. And many that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some to everlasting life because we're in the time of the revealing. So some is going to wake up and accept the truth and you're going to awaken to everlasting life because you will accept the truth and the reproof that comes via the spirit of truth. Then you will, you will humble yourself. You will choose righteousness. Okay. But others are going to, they're going to awaken to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who refuse to humble themselves, those who choose to be puffed up in their pride and their, their, their arrogance, all right? But those of us who are wise, yeah, we're going to be the ones he's going to use, okay? We're going to shine like the brightness of the firmament, okay? To the righteous... This is from the book of Enoch, chapter 103, down here in verse 10. Another mystery, also I point out, to the righteous and to the wise shall be given books of joy, of integrity, and of great wisdom. To them shall books be given in which we shall know, and in which we shall rejoice, and all the righteous shall be rewarded, who from thee shall acquire the knowledge of of every upright path. We the children of light. Has been put here. To help you. Okay. But you want to continue casting us off. That's your choice. You have free agency. Okay. If the truth offends you. Most likely it's because you are deceived. Okay. Now I'm, I'm a little over two hours. Let's go ahead and finish this up. The children of light has been risen hold within on. the land. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, because I got something in my spirit. Uh, one second. All right, now, here we go. 
go. I'm going to finish this up. The children of light has been risen within the lands of our captivity, brought back to remembrance of who we are. And now we're standing boldly upon our feet in these days by the leading of the Holy Spirit to give you these final messages, these final warnings. <sighs> so anyway, people, I'm not keeping this long. I do not have internet. So um, I got to keep these short. I don't get a lot of room on my phone, you know. So when I bring you these messages, um, I'm going to have to take it off my phone and um, put it on my passport, which I only have about maybe 18 gigabytes of space on my passport. So anyway, people, on that note, shalom. All right. So there you have it, people. There you have it. Um, in its entirety, we finished up that audio, all right? I'm going to be having two videos come for you today. You're going to see the first one first and then this one, okay? I'm going to go ahead and go to my studio and begin that uploading process right now, all right? So on that note, shalom.